Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Art Town Montana, the show all about art and architecture and the salvation of the human soul by doing everything the hard way. This is Brett Boundy. Today, I'm going to talk about um, building the goddesses of the seasons. Before I even start, I guess the first thing I need to address is that a few people think of these as nudes, but um, I guess I disagree. I don't think they are. They're um, generally female forms that are blended with the shape of a tree. Um, I guess the other thing I need to kind of talk about is that I'm not trying to create the ideal woman any more than I'm trying to create the ideal tree. The, their forms tend to be long and swoopy and twisty to use technical terms, uh, but uh, but trees are long and swoopy and twisty. And so, you know, there you have it. And uh, also I had some other forces uh, acting on me, you know, dealing with wood that I'll get into later. But uh, anyway, um, I, uh, I'm i pretty proud of how they came out actually. And so I think it's gonna be a pretty fun story. Uh, I do have to warn you, it's gonna be a bit of a slideshow because when I made them, I didn't, uh, I didn't think about video, so I took a lot of pictures. So, you know, hang on for the old school crazy uncle slideshow thing. So I guess, first of all, I got to talk about what in the world would make me do this. You know, each goddess is um, six to 10 feet tall, and each one took 250 to 300 hours to make. I mean, that takes some dedication. You got to want it, you know, to do something like that. And, uh, but I guess, you know, it just arose from the madness that washed over me when I turned 40 or approached 40. It was almost like a physiological switch flipped in my head and I went out of my mind. Before 40, I understood everything in this box and I thought I was a genius. I thought this was all of reality. Afterwards, I'm like, I hate everything in that box. And also, I don't know anything. I don't know anything at all that the universe is, is so endless. Uh, but man, I was just not, not myself for a few years. But besides these odd feelings, uh, were these very vibrant thoughts, these, vi these dreams I had. And one of them was that I would build these goddesses of the seasons, all four of them, and I would set all four on a mountaintop. And then I would just kind of absorb the groovy vibrations as the sun tracked across the sky. And uh, maybe there'd be some naked fire dancers. I don't know. I hadn't worked out all the details, but it, uh, it just felt like a very important thing to do. As usual, or as I always do, or often do, I, I drew her first. So that's a drawing of the spring goddess, what I envisioned. And then I made a little clay mock-up like this. It's another view here from the front. She's a little, little thicker, I guess, not quite as skinny. But uh, then I started carving from this mock-up. Very rough beginnings, right? That's the way wood carving goes. It always is rough in the beginning. Here we're advancing. Then we're starting to smooth out here. Uh, there's something really special about um, newly cut wood, you know, that's just fresh before it's got any finish on it at all. You know, like this from the back. It's really great, isn't it? So my awesome neighbor, Terry, I've talked about before, helped me out. He helped weld on a, uh, it was a, a bearing from a, like a Dodge, like a front wheel drive POS Dodge. And then I built this skirt of copper over it. 
And then I took copper leaves and copper uh, wire up and around her the copper skirt and the copper wire and leaves. Then I put a patina on by um, spraying salt water and vinegar on it. It's kind of a goopy picture of a uh, 39 year old Brett. So the next one I built was winter. But uh, of course I drew it. There's the drawing of winter. My idea was that Winter was stretched up and holding this orb that was all of life safe through the winter. That was the idea of what Winter was. Uh, this is 40-year-old um, Brett getting ready to uh, sculpt. I built the clay model here. And uh, and then I started carving, and it was winter when I began carving. There's a uh, a log in the snow, and of course this log came from who else? My neighbor Terry. I was just hanging out, and he came dragging this log down the road. It's a uh, Doug fir, and it turns out Doug fir is by far the best material to carve. It's very uh, very interlocked. It doesn't split too bad. It's a very uh, fabulous wood to carve. It's strong, but it's not too hard. It's not too, it doesn't split too bad. But here I am working my way. Um, as it was winter, I did move it into, this was at the same time that I was building my sunroom onto the front of my house. So I put plastic over the windows, basically, and plastic in the front door and put a heater out there and then carved through the winter. Uh, I cheated a little. You can see I, I, um, I tinted her lips a little bit. I, I put copper eyelashes in. I painted her eyes blue. Oh, here she's coming along, right? Anyway, uh, and then I used white pickling stain on her body, and and then I used a uh, a darker stain on the. Uh, the branches that were wrapped around her. Eventually I went to a, a walnut stain to make it really dark. And people, when they see it, they think I've somehow wrapped branches around a core of wood or something, but it's one piece as all these goddesses are. Um, in this one, I wanted to use metal in each one. And for this one, I used uh, polished aluminum. So I, I got some old road signs and I cut and polished them in shapes that sort of hinted at ice, you know, flowing, um, ice and snow. I heated each piece and then used ball peen hammers to uh, give them a curve so that they would fit just right over the, uh, over the wood, over the curves of the wood. And so here she is in the end. From the side, from the front, from the back, from the other side. I forgot to take you around her in a little video first, so we'll do that now. So summer sort of came to me when I was driving home one day from work in my old 1960 
four wheel drive Ford. Um, I was driving home and this guy, it was during the period of the beetle kill. And this guy had the jaws of death and was, he had picked up this very beautiful curved Ponderosa curved with branches coming off of it. And I saw that and I thought that has got to be a goddess somehow. And so I pulled over and I said, Hey, he, he was going to put it into a burn pile. And I'm like, Hey, before you burn that, could you just throw it in my truck? And he's like, sure, dude. Yeah. I'm just getting rid of this stuff. It's beetle killed. So that's how I came up with the general idea for summer. But, uh, one day my, my brain was kind of in a state, you know, and I was looking at this log here. This is it. And it was so weird. It looked like it was alive. It looked like it was pulsating. It looked like it was pregnant. And I could see this goddess in there. I could see her wanting to get out. And so that's when the exact shape came to me. I drew her first. And this was my first drawing of her. And she came out fairly close to that, right? I mean, in the ballpark. So after drawing the usual, made a little clay mock-up. There she is. And another view. And then I started carving. There's 41-year-old Brett just happily carving away with a chainsaw. Carving, carving. Uh, kind of a funny thing, though, is I was going to make this one sort of a larger woman tree, you know, the bounty of summer and all that. Um, but uh, since it was beetle killed, uh, after the beetles get in, then a fungus gets into the wood and turns it blue in places. So it turns it in this gorgeous red and orange and brown and blue but, uh, but her butt cheeks were two blue pads, basically, that were sort of affected by the fungus, and they her butt cheeks popped off. And so instantly, she went from a size 8 to a size, you know, 1. And it, it wasn't my fault. But uh, still, as a swoopy tree person, worked out pretty good. At first, her face was different, right? That was her face in the beginning. Very different face than the final face. And very strangely, I miss this person. This is her final face, right? Quite different. And then these are the final pictures of when the uh, she was mainly done. For the, um, for the branches and leaves, I, I continued the wood branches with copper pipe that I would bend and then I would solder from larger to smaller copper pipe to make branches, you know, that get smaller as they branch and uh, grow towards the extremities. And then I cut out leaves uh, with um, metal snips and carved and etched, I guess, uh, veins into the leaves. And then I, um, Again, treated this copper with uh, salt water and vinegar. And we took some pictures of her outside. A good friend of mine helped me take pictures of her outside. So these are some pictures of her out in nature. I really like the shadow of this one. But you can kind of see the gorgeous colors in her there. I got this old thing out.
So finally we come to autumn. Autumn is a tamarack and I chose the tamarack for autumn because the tamarack is one of the, I, it's the only um, conifer that I'm aware of that loses its needles in the autumn. It's, its needles turn this splendorous yellow and then uh, drop. And then in the spring, they have these very fresh new needles that come back. So anyway, tamarack, also the same as the western larch. Um, there was a blowdown near Sealy Lake of these uh, larches, and I got a, a little fairly inexpensive permit to harvest a couple pieces of this very large tamarack. It was almost three foot diameter. It's 33, 34 inch diameter, almost 300 years old. And it kind of put the pressure on me. I'm like, oh my gosh, that thing has been forming for 300 years. I've really got to make something work here. So I had originally conceived that the autumn goddess would be standing like the other three seasons. But then I realized I had an opportunity with this very large log that there was room for her knees to go out. She could be seated. And... Um, so she could be resting in the autumn, you know, before the long winter comes. So you can see here is this very large um, log here. Again, my amazing neighbor Terry helped me get this. We brought two pickups and a trailer, and we used one pickup hooked to uh, a pulley and pulled these logs up onto this trailer. So here I've just begun, you can see, maybe just a few hours into it. And very soon you start seeing her develop. It's very funny and, um, you know, 10% of the time you look like you're halfway done, but goddesses have a lot of nooks and crannies and they require a lot of sanding and a lot of love and attention. So here's a, you know, 42-year-old Brett or 43-year-old Brett, whatever, I can't remember, but looking pretty dorky. Pretty happy, though, with how it's coming along. There she's starting to arise from the wood. Interestingly, this one, her boobs cracked off. I'm like, ah, not again. But, um, but luckily I hadn't carved her, her back yet. And so I was able to just push her back and uh, reestablish her boobs, I guess. Here we go. Here she's coming along. Her face kept changing. Very interesting. She looked like a person I know for a while before she became her own person. The hair I carved loose. I carved it so that you could see between different strands of hair a little bit, that there would be gaps, space. So finally, let's look at her. Let's groove on her for a few moments in video. Okay, my friends, that is the how and the why and the what the heck happened with the goddesses of the seasons. So I hope you enjoyed going along for the ride and um, we will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.